Okay. Uh, here we go once again. Uh, once again, ignore the preflop cards. I really do mean this when I say it. I don't want you guys calling with 4-7 suited. Uh, but we were trying to get ourselves into fun spots where we um, could make bluffs. And so we did <laughs> with 4-7 suited. Once again, uh, pretty much crap. But uh, so ignore that and let's move on to the fun. Uh, so it folds to us on the button. Notice these all, all these crab hands, they, at the very least, they do start with a button raise um, and then us calling because we're in position. Uh, as much as I'm preaching, you know, one thing and doing another, I would never, ever even think about calling with this hand out of position or probably raising it anywhere other than the button. So we call and the flop comes queen, five, nine with two hearts and this person checks to us. Well, notice the last hand where someone checked to us and we didn't really know if it was, you know, because they were strong or because they were weak. Um, in this situation, however, queen, five, nine with two hearts, first of all, uh, it's not as good a board that, like, we're going to be able to take it away in the future because it's going to get uglier and uglier. So this is a kind of a board texture where if Call Me Mr. Shark has ace-king, um, he expects this board to have hit our range. Like if we, if our range includes stuff like queen jack suited, you know, ace queen, king queen, um, pocket pairs like tens and jacks, he expects that this is a board. A lot of these like middle cards, two tone boards, um, that we're probably not going to give up on very often. And he's right to assume that a lot of our range, um, has some sort of pair in this board or has some sort of a draw. So if I have you know ace king without with no heart, you know, in his situation. I might not fire a c-bet either on this kind of a board, um, and that's actually a smart move. But given that I know that, um, I think this is a great time to try to take it away with one bet because I think that there's a, you know a large percentage of the time he's going to fold, and this is a great hand to do it with because you know if I had a flush draw here, I would probably check behind once he checks to me because it's possible that he is check raising all in with you know an over pair ace queen something like that or even ace king of hearts or something like that. You know it is possible he's going to check raise all in. Like I said, it's not probable I would say it's you know I see it when they check on this kind of a board I see them fold about two-thirds of the time I would say um, but if I had some sort of a draw I would much rather check behind but here we have seven high no pair no draw so this is a great spot to try to bet to take it away so okay we know we're gonna bet now let's talk about how much um, we could make a huge bet and then he's definitely not gonna play back at us but on this situation once again it's a three bet pot what am I going to do with like ace queen or king queen here? Or if I have a set of fives, what am I going to do here? Am I going to make a huge bet? Do I want him to fold? Of course not. You know, if I have queen jack even, and, and uh, if I bet here with queen jack, it's for the intention of getting it all in. It's not because I'm going to fold to a raise. So if I'm betting a hand here that I like, I don't need to bet a huge amount because he's either check raising or he's not. You know, and often if I have a big hand like pocket fives, I'll probably bet very small here to try to induce him to make some sort of play at me. And one of our um, lessons, one of our episodes coming up in the series is going to be all about inducing bluffs. So it's going to be about value betting and inducing bluffs. But we're going to show you quite a few situations where we do try to induce a bluff. Um, and it's pretty cool. But given that we're betting so small with our big hands, and he knows that, you know, or he doesn't know that, but he, he assumes it might be true. Given that, and also given the fact that, like I said, I expect him to be check folding this a lot of the time, um, I don't think you know, if I bet 20, if I bet, you know, half pot here, I don't think he's going to wake up and all of a sudden decide to check raise his black ace king. I think he's just going to fold it because he doesn't know if I'm trying to induce a bluff or not. So, you know, this is versus a regular, by the way, uh, a regular, I think he's a very tight player or not like hugely tight. Like he was squeezing with big aces, but he's not, you know, someone that doesn't have a clue what's going on. So here, you know, it's a great spot. I just look at that. I bet 21 into a 50, you know, I figure either he's check raising me or he's not. I don't think it's going to change. Um, Dan mentioned to you earlier that people play a lot more straightforwardly in three bet pots. I think that's a really good observation. I think that's correct. Um, the inducing bluff segment we're going to show you later. If I bet 21 into a 50, a lot of the times it's because I want them to make a play at me. That's more in like regular raised pots than three bet pots. In three bet pots, people are playing much more straightforwardly. So I can just make this size bet. It's so cheap and it's pretty much going to work uh, almost you know, 95% as well as a bet of like 38 or 39 or something like that. And it's much cheaper. So, you know, instead of risking 40, I risk 20. 
and I get uh, pretty much the same fold equity. So, you know, that's that for talking about um, situations in which we're bluffing in 3-bet pots. Um, I hope you've, you know, learned a lot there. You know, like, we wanted to spend most of this episode talking about bluffing in 3-bet pots because it's really hard to make hands. <laughs> so, you know, you're often going to find yourselves in situations where you're not going to make a hand, and it's extremely hard because the pot's big and people are nervous, they don't want to lose their stack. You know, there's a ton of stuff, and and that's something that, we, again, we didn't talk about this a ton, that's something we're going to use against people when we put pressure on them by 3-betting them in position um, and C-betting. So that's something like Dan was doing with the King Jack, where he 3-bet someone because he had position, and he's putting pressure on them. But it's also something we want to learn how to deal with when we're the ones getting 3-bet, and we want to make um, smart decisions post-flop. And now I'm going to show you a couple of hands where... We actually have a, a hand, uh, which is pretty awesome, and we decide that we want to get value from it, and we're going to figure out the best way to do that. Or actually, we're only going to figure out uh, one way to do that, um, but it's the non-standard way, which is in line with the entire episode series. So let's see it. 